How many of you got to see fireworks this week? Oh, yes, lots of you. And did you say wow? Like a whole string of wows that topple on top of each other wows? You know, like, wow, oh, wow, whoa, wow, wow. Does that happen to you? When you or is it me? <laughs> it's like this collective wow, right? Did you know wow is a prayer? Just that word, wow, is a prayer. It's wow, right? <laughs> How simple, right? We don't have to complicate it. Anne Lamont says, help, thanks, wow. They're the only three prayers you ever need to know. She has a little slim volume. It's actually humorous, as Anne always is. And Anne, 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 our bookstore manager, ordered some, so if you're interested. So that was part of the inspiration for this uh, prayerful uh, Essentials of Prayer mini-series that we've been doing. I had to sneak in a little you know, affirmative prayer, so we also put in Claim Truth. So today we're kind of putting the thanks and the wow together, because thanks and wow, they just go together, don't they? They just run right together because when we are in wow, we are in gratitude. And when we are in gratitude, there's often a wow. And it can be a wow or it can be a wow, you know, it can be that kind of sacred wow, like quiet wow, um, you know, maybe lowercase wow. <laughs> just it's in there and it can be this really expressive kind of kind of wow. So, so we're going to just talk about wow today and experience a little wow. So one of the things that really wows me is, is something I want to share with you on video that I think you two, if you've got a pulse, will be wowed by too. If you loaded two city buses and put them on a scale together, you'd have about how much a whale weighs. And they jump out of the water like that. I mean, that puts some perspective on it, doesn't it? So next week, Bradley and I are going to Maui again. I know. Wow, right? I'm glad you can share with us the joy. And, and so we were there one other time, and we were snorkeling. And it was one of those, like, wows on top of each other kind of moments, you know, experiences. So, so we were um, underwater, and we both loved turtles. And we got to swim with these sea turtles, just showed up. You know, it wasn't like it was one of those planned, like, swim with the turtles thing. It's like we were just snorkeling, and there they are. And so it was like, wow, there's sea turtles. And then... You might want to close your eyes and be with me underwater for a minute, because then this is what I began to hear and started to nudge her wildly. That's the, the other kind of wow, isn't it? It's like hauntingly beautiful. So we don't see these things and then, right? We don't expect these things and then we have these experiences and it's just brings us into that, thank God I'm alive moment, you know? Full presence. Wow is a prayer that praises it's an expression of praise. And so when we say, wow, we praise that which we are loving and experiencing and enjoy with, and it increases. Its appearance increases. Its reverberation within us increases. So that expression, that wow, that moment of gratitude or that wow, it really, it, it does something to our whole being. It shifts something in our whole being, doesn't it? So it's, it's worthy of like setting it aside as this is a prayer all by itself. So most of my wows, I don't know about you, but occur in nature, in relationship to like art or poetry or, or music maybe, or amazing physical feats. Like, you know, do you ever watch the Olympics and it's just like, wow, 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 like what the human body can do? You know, or, or acrobatics or something like that. It's just amazing. Or the creativity or the ingenuity. You know, All of these things, I'm guessing, are also things that make you say, wow, that bring you into that state of awe, that sense of wonder about life. And if you think it's just out there, think again. In your very own body, there are amazing, magnificent things happening. Here's a few. Every hour... One billion cells in your body are replaced. So while we sit here together in this hour, 
we are all replacing one billion cells in our bodies. Isn't that incredible? The eye of the human can detect 500 shades of gray. Not 50, 500. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome with that. You're always right on cue. We don't plan that. He just does it. <laughs> OK, here's another one. Your thigh bone is stronger than concrete. What? I know, right? Wow. Your brain has about 100 billion neurons working at such a level of precision and intelligence that your own brain cannot comprehend its own magnificence. It's a little bit like us not being able to comprehend the idea that we are divine. You know, we talk about it all the time. We remind each other. We say it. I don't know about you, but it's like I forget and I remember, I forget and I remember. And even when I remember, I don't always experience until I'm in a moment of full-on presence and going, wow. In those moments, I'm sort of like, wow. You know, there's a place for kneeling. You know, we don't do it too much in unity, but there's a place for that because it's that, it's that, mm, that just humbleness of the wow of life and who we are and what we are and what we get to experience and what's available to us, the human connections, the connections with other beings. Just there's so much, right? There's so much good in this life. Don't let the news out there tire you, <laughs> exhaust you, allow you to forget the truth. Because the truth is everywhere present in this world. It's in the beauty of things, sometimes even painful things. There's a wow, there's a wow, you know, that mm, sacred connection kind of wow. So the state of awe is described as a time when we are moved by overwhelming feelings of wonder, reverence, or admiration. And so it is when we are in those states that what follows is the expression, which is the wow part. In a state of wonder, in a state of awe, is what then brings forth the single word, that single expression. The writer of Psalms knew this well, knew the state of awe well, and expressed the wow in this way. You made me so happy, God. You, I saw your work and I shouted for joy. How magnificent your work, oh my God. It's really what we're saying, isn't it? We're praying that psalm when we're in that state. I had this experience during the summer camp. We had a, you know, we had a kids' unity summer camp, a full week long. You're going to hear more about it at the end when Michelle comes in with the kids. But um, anyway, so that was going on, and it was really exciting. We had 20-some kids here, 20 or 21 kids. And I walked in the room one day, and it was like glad shouts for joy. You know, they had made these... Um, clay representations, they learned what their power animal was or identified their power animal, and then they made clay representations of all their animals, and they were colorful clay. And they were circling around me, all lifting up their artwork to be shown and seen and appreciated and noticed, and themselves, really, right? Because this is a part of me. I'm the fox. I'm the coyote. I'm the, you know, monkey somebody was, you know, and all these different animals. And so I was just sort of like spinning around, you know, and going, wow, wow, wow. And they were just like, look at mine, look at mine. There was all these glad shouts, you know. And it was the psalm in action. It was, you made me so happy, God. I saw your work, and I shouted it for joy. Your, how magnificent your work. Oh my God. That, that was that moment right there. You know, we think of God as this like entity, this thing that we've been, you know, enculturated into thinking that it's like somehow out there or over there or up there or in the sky or whatever it is. No, it's right here. It's right here with the children as we're spinning around and they're vying for attention to show them, show their piece of work. And you're saying, wow, wow, that is beautiful. It's so colorful. It's vibrant. Wow, you're the fox. That's so cool. And there's that moment, right? Sort of a frenzied moment. But then there's that, ah, you know, that we share together the state of wonder, the state of awe, the prayer of wow. There's a surprise element to wow that's so important. It's such a piece of this, right? That you're, you know, snorkeling along or swimming along and a 50-ton animal breaches out from underneath the depths of the sea that, you know, you didn't see coming, right? It's that kind of thing. Or it's the simple things like, 
you know, maybe you're feeling a little blue or a little lonely and somebody does something very kind for you, like makes you a cup of tea or gives you a hug, you know, just when you needed it. It's a sort of nurturing, like, wow, they really knew what I needed or I didn't even know what I needed until that got delivered, you know. So it's, it's all of that. It's, the, the wow is, is those unexpected moments of kindness, those great surprises. They're the things like, you know, that move us, like a, like a piece of music moves us. You know, I, I think often of the, the magnificence of this one single instrument. The violin can weep and it can be a jubilant fiddle, you know, and both are equal wows. They're just those other, those two kinds of wow, you know. And there's, that's just like simple examples, but you just begin to think of them and it's just like gratitude, it just sort of tumbles out, right? All the wonder, all the awe, all the amazement of what we are and what this life offers us and, and, and who we have come to be and who we have yet to become, who we will become, who we are becoming in this moment. And then this moment is just it. We experience it when we are inside the prayer of wow. Wow can be a moment of spiritual realization. It can be a moment of inspiration. Did you know that word means in spirit? So when we are inspired, we are in spirit. We are in that moment. We are in that presence. We can hear something, you know, you all know this. You can hear something 50 times, 50 different ways. And on the 51st time, it's like the angels sing and you get it. Like the aha just happens. The shift happens. The spiritual realization occurs. I think that's something like how it might have happened for Myrtle Fillmore, although she may not have heard it 50 times because it was new thought, right, <laughs> that she was being exposed to. Um, but she's sitting in this lecture, as many of you know, our co-founder Myrtle, and she hears this man say, you are a child of God and therefore you cannot inherit illness. And she just gets it, like gets it at a cellular level. Oh my God, that's it, that's it. All my life, I've believed myself to be sickly. I bought this idea of that sickness is, is genetic and that I, it got passed down through my genes and that I've looked to my mother and my father and their mothers and their fathers. And instead, I could recognize, oh no, I am a child of the universe. I am a child of the source. I have a mother, father, God. And it's not possible to inherit sickness when I recognize that truth. And so she stepped into that truth. And do you know when she stepped into that truth, what it did? It not only healed her, the work that she did to heal herself, it spawned an entire movement. That's why we're here today. Because one woman heard a message and let that spiritual realization, that wow prayer, turn into a complete change, a complete shift for her, and then a creative overflowing into this movement that she created with her husband, Charles. So it's, it's really um, potent, this simple expression. It's so much more than a simple, I mean, I, I think I say it a lot. I'm going to say it more because now that I really have come into it as a prayer, which I really, you know, hadn't, hadn't until, up until recently, really embodied or known as a prayer or thought of as a prayer, and I hope you're with me on this too, suddenly it's like every time you say that, you can realize, wow, I'm praying. Wow, I'm praying. Wow. And yeah, it is a prayer because I feel it. That's the key to prayer, right? We talked about the word. The word is God. In the beginning was the word. God, the word was with God. And the word was God. It's the potency of the word. But to recognize then what does that word do? How does it move in me? How does it move through me? What does it express in me? What do I feel when I say it? So really, you might find that there are some other words that are prayers for you too. Something other than help, thanks, wow, claiming truth in its various ways. And whatever that is for you, let it be your prayer. Because the more we allow that, the more we become the prayer, the more we live the prayer, and the more we're in this beautiful awesome state of the presence of God. So wow can be, you know, uh, um, also the end of, of something that, you know, we've been experiencing. I remember going through a, a hard breakup and every morning I'd wake up, I'd open my eyes and I'd cry. And then one morning I woke up, I opened my eyes and I went, wow, I think I'm done. 
<laughs> you ever do that? You know, the end of a loss, you've been grieving and grieving and grieving, and then one day it's just like, huh, I don't feel like crying anymore. Huh, I think I'll go out for a walk. You know, <laughs> it's just like you've shifted, you know, but you allowed that period of time. And that was that sort of, wow, wow, I love this, this person so much, or I had so many dreams tied in here. You know, and then, and then you can just realize, oh, there's new life, there's new beginnings, there's something else that wants to sprout, like the, the little green that sprouts at the beginning of spring, you know, and then new hope, and then flowering. Lo and behold, it happens to us again and again and again in our lives, right? Then we get into a difficult time and we totally forget everything we ever learned, right? You ever, you ever do that? Like, oh my God, I'm going to be swallowed up with this, you know, because it's just, I don't, you know, and then it's just, just remember, just take a moment to pause and go, oh no, I've been here before. I've been here before. Maybe I'll just start with a little wow. Because I made it through that, and I made it through that, and I made it through that, and I made it through that. Wow, that's pretty incredible, right? Before you know it, you've talked yourself into wow. <laughs> It really is that close always for us. No matter what's going on in our lives, there can be that shift without, without overrunning what is true here, you know, what is also true here. If there's sorrow here, there's sorrow here, and that's okay too. We're not trying to bypass it. We're just trying to bring it along with us as we move in a natural rhythm of wow. Wow can be a point of connection, a point of compassion, a point when we recognize that in another person. Wow, that must really hurt. Wow, yeah, because human life can be tough sometimes. And there's those moments of connection, and that's a wow too, right? So wow is a prayer. It's an expression. It's a prayer of gratitude. It's, a, it's an uplifting. It's a multiplier of blessings. It's a, it's a joy. It's an expression of great joy. It makes us stand up straighter and put our arms out wider to life to ourselves, to an openness, to an expectancy, even though we'll always be surprised. You know, I don't ever want to stop being surprised at how our principles work. If I ever do, if you ever catch me doing that, please just write me. <laughs> because the surprise is even though we can claim truth and we can expect it and we can know it and we can be in faith, when it comes along, I want to say, wow every time. I want to have that delight, that moment of surprise, that, that, that joy. And I think we can have both, right? We can have both because that's a big part of it is, is that, that piece of it to, to always be in delight for what comes for us. And so we can miss it though, right? We can miss the wows. We miss them all the time. We don't know what we miss sometimes, but we miss them all the time. So the keys are to stay open. And to stay open means to stay open in a way where you're not getting in that, oh yeah, been here, done that kind of mode, right? I already know this, I've already heard that a hundred times, I get that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who wants to be in that kind of energy, you know? But we do, we kind of get a little spiritually smug on the, on the you know, we can get a little righteous, a little, you know, or, or be about being right. And, and it just shuts everything down. It shuts the, the wow factor down because it's all about that sort of childlike, you know, openness. And so if we really want to enter the kingdom, as Jesus said, to be childlike, it requires a kind of openness. It requires a, a, a kind of a sense of, of paying attention. So Dr. John Izzo gives a perfect example of this with he and his daughter. He's writing a report, and his daughter comes in, and she said, Daddy, Daddy, you got to see this bug. It's the most incredible bug I've ever seen. It's red, and it's spotted, and it's so beautiful. You have to see this bug. It's down in the driveway. Come see the bug. And he's writing his report. He kind of pretends like he didn't even hear anything, you know. So she repeats the whole thing over again, exactly as she said it, because he must not have heard her, right? Daddy, Daddy, you must go down, you know, to see this bug. you got to come with me. It's black and it's red and spotted. And I've never seen anything like this. And it's down in the driveway. Come see it with me. And she's, you know, he, he says, well, I'm working on a report right now. Maybe the bug will wait and it'll still be there when I'm done. You know, maybe, or maybe the, you know, it'll just be hanging around still. And, and she's totally undaunted, you know. And, and she says, Daddy, bugs do not wait for us. <laughs> And so he realizes, you know, the innocent wisdom, right? And so he's like, okay, okay, yeah, let's go. Let's go see the bug. So we walked down our very long driveway, you know, 
and we get to the bug, he said, she's right. It was like one of the most beautiful caterpillars he'd ever seen. It was red, and it was black, and it was spotted, and it was beautiful. And, and he says, you know, so many years later, my daughter's all grown up. He goes, I can close my eyes. I can't remember a word of that report, what the report was about, <laughs> who it was for, what the title was. But what I can remember, exactly what that bug looked like, and that moment shared with my daughter of wow. Yeah, that's what it's about, right? That's what it's about. We get so busy on our agendas and our time on our to-dos that we've completely forgotten about the source of all goodness that brings us a gift and a gift and another gift. Here, how about this wow? Here, how about this? Hey, how about some awe here? How about some gratitude? How about I lift you up? And we're there you know, looking at our cell phones walking down the street. We have no idea, right? We missed it all. So, so it's that. It's that showing up. It's a paying attention. It's staying open. It's simple, but not always easy because the world will distract us in you know, 65 ways and plus. So, and, and the Buddha says it like this, says, if we could see the miracle of a single flower clearly, our whole life would change. So we can also be very purposeful of just sort of stopping and looking, right? And look, have you ever really, I mean, really, when you look, you begin to look or maybe smell the flower, and then you really look inside the flower, and you see all those intricate patterns. It's like the pattern of the universe inside a single flower. It's pretty darn amazing, things that make you go, wow. So if you need a wow, just go look at a flower. I mean, right here on our property, we have some beautiful flowers. So, so it can be proactive, <laughs> that you seek out the amazement of life, that it also, and almost always, is a delightful surprise, what you find. And that's a big part of how this expression comes forward, which is really the last of, of this sort of how-to, if there's a how-to, to stay open, to pay attention, and to express. You know, all these psychologists study happiness now. Thank goodness we're not all about studying what's wrong with us, but we're actually studying what's right with us these days, you know? And, and so they study happiness, and they see that, that actually people who have gratitude practices report greater levels of happiness. Not really a big surprise. And they also say that not only is that great, but if you express your gratitude, happiness levels go up even higher. So it is in not just the feeling of, wow, I feel really grateful, and you're thinking that to yourself, or you're feeling it inside of yourself, but saying it out loud. Wow, I am so grateful. It's like a whole nother declaration, a whole nother experience of the happiness, of the joy of life. So in, in the same way, yes, wow, we want to express it. We want to be in it. We want, yeah, let's just say it. Let's say wow together. Wow. See how good that feels? And then when you hear it in stereo, it's like, yeah, that feels really good. So, you know, and, and so just kind of wrapping the, where we've been. So we've been at help and, and claiming truth. And so if things feel stagnant or stuck or anything like that in your life, you can just pray help, right? It opens the way, help. Or if, if there's a sense of, I need to pull forth the, the truth here. I'm forgetting what the truth is. You just claim the truth. Speak the truth. Speak your divinity into being. Speak the goodness into being for your others, for yourself, for all life. If it's too hard for you to get there right now, you're not in a state of bringing forth the love and the joy and the health and the wholeness and the harmony and all those great things, and you're like, yeah, I just am not quite there yet, then, then just pray the, I know there's a pony in here somewhere prayer. <laughs> Because it's a prayer of hope, it's a prayer of knowing, it's a prayer of blessing, right? I'm just, the blessing is in here somewhere. And I'm going to call it forth, I'm going to claim it, I'm going to know it's true. That will bring forth a kind of wow when you least expect it, which is a part of the joy. I think spirit must have a lot of, if spirit were personified, it would have a lot of joy around this idea. Or the very energy of spirit maybe has joy in the surprise element of this. Let me just really surprise them right now with this and then, you know, a breaching whale or some, some such thing, you know, a, a flower opening before your eyes. 
So um, I had some prayers when I, I came here, um, some prayers for our community. And one of them was, I really wanted us all to be on the same page and have the framework of the five basic principles, because it just really gives us the solid foundation of knowing what unity is, communicating what unity is, and, and all of our companion teachers' sort, teachings sort of layer in underneath the, the principles. So it just gives us the solid framework. That's why we, we teach that to um, people as they're coming in new to become members, so, so that we're all kind of speaking that language, at least understanding that framework that is, uh, that is unity. Um, you know, we're, we're not the kind of folks who want a lot of dogma, but just to have some guiding principles is really helpful, something to grab onto and to understand. So that was one of my prayers, that that be something that's really known in our community, that's a really uh, solid foundation that we stand on. And then also, I was really wanting some color and art in our sanctuary. And so you got to be careful when you're new, you know, because there could be some sacred cows you don't know about. <laughs> so I had to ask the board and the staff, you know, what do you think about color and art in the sanctuary? And everybody was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, great. So then Annie and I, our stage manager, got together with some of our artists in the community. And we began to just toss around ideas and talk about color and talk about art and and then prayers sometimes require patience. It kind of just went into a quiet space for a while. Elena Dorinkina was one of the artists who I had been talking to, or who came to our first meeting. Elena, do you want to come up? And um, yeah. It was her birthday yesterday, too. <laughs> So Elena came to the first meeting, we're tossing around ideas, and then she had a show or something. He said, I need some time to do my show. And so things just kind of went latent. And, you know. and then I said, Elena, what do you think about the five basic principles? She said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if you've seen Elena's amazing art, yeah, why don't you take that off? Do you have a... Oh, just come, I want you close to me. <laughs> So, um, so then uh, Elena's, if you've seen Elena's art before, it's beautiful. Um, and she hasn't done a, as much in um, the style that we were talking about. And I said, well, this is a totally different style. And what'd you say? Yes, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I will pray and meditate. <laughs> so I, I thought, well, maybe we, maybe like we'd have five different artists or, you know, what, what would, She's like, no, I'll, I can do them. I'll do them all. There'll be some <laughs> consistency. So Aunt, two prayers got answered in one. And Elena made not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. Or yes, five. <laughs> oh, five. Five canvases for us. This was a labor of love. She's a professional artist. So you know how much time and talent and energy and, and generosity this represents. Her husband happens to be a contractor and on our board, Dimitri. And um, he hung them, planned for the hanging, put lighting up, draped them. And so, would you like to see them? Yes. <laughs> Dimitri, let's take a look. Principle number one. Oh, we could, we could have a drum roll, Dan. <laughs> no. Principle number two. <laughs> and number three. Number four. <laughs> And number five. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Uh, I had such a fun and joy. And thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
you. That's a wow prayer, don't you think? Let's say, let's say wow together. Wow. wow. That's my prayer. Wow, that's my prayer. Let's say that. Wow, that's my prayer. So it is. Thank you.